Hey y'all, welcome back. So in today's video, we're just gonna be getting some stuff done. I need to update y'all on this situation going on right here. And then also tonight for dinner, I'm making a recipe out of our church cookbook. So a few weeks ago, probably a couple months ago actually, I had this idea to do Southern church recipes because we all know if you go to a Southern church, all these little Southern ladies, they have the best recipes, they know how to cook. So I thought why not like kind of make that into a series, do some Southern church recipes, Southern church cookbook recipes. So anyway, I thought I would just include that dinner in today's video. So we're gonna get some stuff done. I'm gonna make myself some lunch really quick and I'm gonna try these new wraps. I thought I would share those if you're interested. So it's just gonna be a mix of everything. A little bit of cooking, cleaning, repeating. So yeah, let's just get started. But first, really quick, we are filming like our whole process to do our kitchen. So I'm not gonna like go over it too much, but I just wanted to show y'all cause I know y'all are like, oh, what the heck are y'all doing back there? And I know y'all can go ahead and leave me the comments on tearing these beautiful cabinets down but don't worry we're only tearing those two down but anyway yes that's gone we are gonna put a hood here we have a new vent that is currently in our messy dining room because that's all my cookbooks that was in that cabinet so we got a new vent it's right there and i wanted to hang it up a little bit higher y'all probably will remember we had a big microwave that was here it's just it was a nice microwave but it's just you know it was put in a few years ago when they were quite large <laughs> so just to open this whole area up we decided to um, cut out the bottom of this cabinet that way we can put the vent a little bit higher like the bottom of it will sit basically where those cabinets end where they end right here and so that way we're going to have a vent that covers all of that. I'll still have my shelf up there. Darren's just going to move it up a little bit higher. And then all this is so much more open. It already makes the kitchen feel so much bigger, y'all. Like especially over there cooking, you feel like you have so much more room. I'm already loving it. But yeah, we got all that taken down. And of course, all this is going to be backsplash. We decided just to do subway tile. So that's how that's going to be. The cabinets will be white, but not quite stark white, just because I think it'll match our granite better. But I'm still trying to decide. Y'all can let me know what color grout to do with our subway tile. It's just plain white subway tile, but as you can see, the granite is kind of a tan, but maybe I can show y'all up close. It does have some like white, some light gray, some black in there. I don't think I want black grout though. If anything, like a charcoal gray maybe. I thought about like a tan or taupe color, but I'm worried that might just look dirty in the white subway tile, you know? So let me know, should we do like the charcoal gray or just pure white and have it all white? So anyway, that's what we're working on. That's our kitchen update so far, but that was like a huge thing so now that that's done i think the rest of the kitchen is really going to come along pretty quickly hopefully in like a month or so the whole thing will be done and like i said i filmed that whole process so you'll get a whole like kitchen makeover video kitchen reveal it's gonna be a lot of fun so for lunch today i really wanted to try these almond tortilla wraps that I found actually at food line so some of y'all might remember I tried the siete almond wraps a few months back and I loved them I found them at Costco they were so good so when I saw these I wanted to try them they are by mission so we just had some leftover taco meat from the night before and I thought I would just make me a couple tacos to see how they were so I just made my tacos like normal and then I just folded them and tried to kind of sear that fold on that side they fell apart a little bit but I have to say I did enjoy these but I like the siete ones a little bit better these tortillas were a little bit more thick, but all in all, they still tasted really good. Now I'm gonna get started on our dessert for tonight, and tonight I'm making brownie pie. And like I said, this comes from our church cookbook, and it was actually put in there by my grandmother. So first you start with a Betty Crocker Supreme Walnut Brownie Mix. 
it's that specific and you use three eggs so the directions say you just use the box directions but you add three eggs instead of one and that just does something to the brownies it makes them kind of crispy on the outside but still really soft and kind of more dense on the inside it's really good so y'all have to let me know if you try it how you like it so I'm just mixing up those brownies I'm gonna add them to my little brownie pan and those are gonna go into the oven and while that is working over on the stove I'm just gonna prepare this chocolate pudding mix and again the recipes the recipe specifies not to use instant you have to use this cook kind so that's what I'm doing it came out a little bit lumpy <laughs> which y'all will see in a second but it tasted perfectly fine it was delicious so once the brownies came out of the oven I'll show y'all how they kind of look you can kind of tell that crispiness I was talking about but that's just on the outside it's really unique so definitely give this a try but once the brownies and the pudding cooled I just added that pudding on top of there and then you're gonna take one small carton of uh, Cool Whip add that on top and then drizzle the top with some chocolate syrup my grandmother has added uh, more walnuts or even almonds on top you can do that if you'd like or even some sprinkles but I just added the chocolate syrup and this is so easy but y'all it is really so good I hope you give this one a try if you do let me know tag me whatever it is and let me know how you like it just a different and good spin on some good old brownies So when I was kind of flipping through to find what recipes I wanted to try first for this little series, y'all, you could not go through a church cookbook without seeing like 10 different chicken casseroles. And most of them included this Pepperidge Farm stuffing mix. So that's what I'm using. I'm adding it to a bowl with a stick of butter melted. And I'm just going to mix that to combine the butter all over that stuffing mix. Then I'm going to get my 9 by 13 dish out and you're just going to add about half of this mixture to the bottom. Next on top of that stuffing mixture, you just add about two or three cups of chopped cooked chicken. And I actually did use a rotisserie chicken this night which made this come together that much quicker and I just love using rotisserie chicken and I have to say this particular one it was like a good rotisserie chicken y'all know when y'all go to the store sometimes them little chickens be just tiny this one was a good one I guess all those injected hormones anyway they were delicious okay back to the recipe I'm adding one carton of sour cream and then one can of cream and chicken soup I'm gonna get that all mixed up together and that's gonna go right over top of the chicken I don't know if I said, but I'm sure y'all saw, I just layered the chicken on top of the stuffing and then that sour cream and cream of chicken soup mixture goes on top of that. And then next you bring back over that other half of the stuffing mix, add that over top of the sour cream and cream of chicken. And then you're going to take about two to three cups of chicken broth and you're just going to pour that all over top of the stuffing. This recipe said you really want this to be this word. I'm going to put it on the screen. You really want it to be moist because all that stuffing mix is going to soak it right up. You don't want it to be dry. So just kind of eyeball it. And this is going into the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. And again, this is so nostalgic for me because I swear my grandmother used to make this all the time after church. I just served mine over top of some rice with some green beans on the side. And I'm telling y'all, this hit the spot this night. So good. My family said they all love this chicken casserole just as much as the one I normally make with the buttery cornflakes on top. So here is that brownie pie. I put it in the fridge for a couple hours and now I'm going to cut into it so you can see all those layers in there. This dessert is just so good. It's actually not overly sweet, which you might think that it would be, but it's really not. It's super creamy, super good. Those walnuts in there give it a nice little crunch. It's just the best. I think you guys will really love it if you try it. And I was showing y'all everyone and their thumbs up they gave 
gave us Hayden gave her two thumbs up and two kind of feet up I don't know what this crazy girl is doing but everybody really loved it I loved it I'm not even a huge brownie person so I hope y'all give both these recipes a try let me know if you think you will thank y'all so much for joining me today and I'll see y'all again really soon in my next video bye y'all